Going through the mail here, wasn't pen. It's all right, Hoss. I ain't got no time for no chit chat, though. What's the matter? You got trouble? Not if I find him first, and there's his rig. Whose rig? That Lothario Larkin is back in town. Lothario Larkin? Well, I'll be doggo. Who would have figured old Lothario could have ever afforded a rig like this? Gonna mean I see that coot again. The only place you're gonna see him is in my jail. When I find him. Oh, now, Roy, there ain't nothing wrong with Lothario. Oh, he's a pretty nice fella. He's just maybe a little too friendly. <laughs> I told him the last time I threw him out of town, when he comes back, it's going to be to a nice, safe jail cell. You got any idea where he's at? Well. Does that answer your question? Come on. See that, Roy? Picking that stuff up? He's changed. You want to bet? Ladies, now that everything is peaceful and quiet, will you join me at the bar? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit! <laughs> Hoss! Hey! Compadre! <laughs> Come in, Hoss! Hi there, Lothario. <laughs> oh, bigger and prettier than ever, Hoss. Well, uh, thank you, Lothario. You look pretty good yourself. Uh, you're right prosperous life. Oh, I am. I got me a little gold mine over in California. As a matter of fact, uh, I've been doing so good, I decided to come over here and take a little vacation and uh, hmm, renew old friendships. <laughs> Mr. Larkin, the only old friendships you're going to renew is through the bars in one of my jail cells. Now, I told you last time you was here, you come back, I'd throw you in jail. Oh, Roy. All right, then I'll give him his choice. In the jail or out of the town, one. Uh, too bad, Hoss. Their gentlemen friends decide to leave very suddenly, and we, we could have had ourselves a nice party. <laughs> no, thank you, Lothario. Oh, Hoss, that reminds me. I owe you something. You remember the last time Roy throwed me out of town? You staked me? Oh, you don't have to do that, Lothario. No, I want to give it back to you. I'm rich. Besides, I owe you a lot more than money, Hoss. Lothario. Time is a-wasting. Well, you ladies might just as well spend this yourselves. Looks like I'm leaving. Oh, but Lothario, you just got here. But like he said, he's just leaving. Now, come on. Oh, oh. means I got to take another long ride. And I hurt my back coming in yesterday in this tussle. And, uh, Hoss, can you see anything? I'm, it feels like a muscle spasm or something. If it's a muscle spasm, uh, you need some liniment on uh -huh. it. You know, if you could make it out to the Bondarosa, you could spend the night tonight and then get a fresh start in the morning. Oh. Oh, Hoss, that sounds just wonderful. I, I'd get to see your pa again and the brothers, and and it wouldn't make my trip seem near so wasted. Yeah, well, what about it, Roy? So long as he's out of Virginia City. <laughs> oh, Hoss, uh, I, I just remembered there's uh, something I got to pick up before I go out, so... Why don't you go ahead, and then I'll come out later, all right? Roy? All right. Do what you have to do, but be on your way in a half hour, you hear? I promise, Sheriff. I promise. It's him, isn't it? It's really him. What's the matter, Laura? Does he bring back regrets? No, but let's get away from here. I. Money in the action is here. We stay just as long as it's profitable. And Laura. Don't get any ideas. For his sake. Understand? How could you do it? How 
could you do it? How could you let Lothario loose in Virginia City again? Paul, oh, he gave me his word of honor that he was going to stay out of trouble. Now, he just wanted to pick up something, that's all. Oh, so he's like an old cougar. A cougar's got no honor. Look, maybe something happened to him. Yeah. Yeah, something nice. Something romantic. Little brother, you got a mighty suspicious mind. Yeah, when it comes to Lothario, you bet I do. Look, uh... Well, I, I better get started. Adam's gonna be looking for me. Be back in a couple of days when we have all those wild horses hobbled. You just sit right down again, young man. We're gonna need you more than Adam does. We're gonna be mighty unpopular people around here unless we can keep that Lothario hobbled. Hey! We're here! Start hobbling. He wasn't lying. He picked up some. Oh, no. It's Meg Jones. Her old man will kill him. Ah, uh, Ben. Are you? <laughs> Joe. Hey, it's Mario. good to see Hi, you, Meg. fellas. Oh, it seems like it's been a million years, huh? Yeah, well, it seems just like yesterday to me, Lothario. I hope we ain't late for dinner. We're hungrier than a whale in a minute pond. Oh, Ben, I, uh, I brought a beautiful rose to decorate your dinner table. Yeah, you sure did, Lothario. Uh, excuse me, mm -hmm. excuse me. Uh, Meg? Does your, does your paw know that you're out buggy riding with Lothario? No, but he can't stop me. I'm of age. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I guess you are, um... I think it might be best if Horse was to take you home what? right now, young lady. No. Oh, wait a minute, Ben. What? What, what are you talking about? This is kind of discourteous, I guess. Discourteous, rude, and uncivilized. Lothario? Oh, no, Ben. Now, wait. Hello? My goodness gracious. Now, come on now. All I can say is you cartwrights are mighty high handed. Uh, you all the Now, Meg, you ain't got no call to be said that burn sore at me. It's just like Paul said. You ain't got no business running around with a man like Lothario Larkin, no Al. Why, he's broke more hearts than half the... Why, you sanctimonious bag of wind, why don't you shut up? Yeah, just figured on doing that. You! Uh, oh, hi, Abner. Sure is pretty day, eh? I always suspicioned you, Hoss. I always did. For what? For trying to lure my poor little girl out alone somewhere, unescorted and unchaperoned. Sneak! Now, Abner, Abner, that, that just ain't so. Well, I was just bringing her home. From where? From my house. You see? You see? But Abner, Abner, my pa and little Joe and everybody was there. Pa, will you stop acting so silly? It wasn't Hoss. I wouldn't go out with him. Hoss was just sticking his big fat nose into someone's business. He shouldn't have. Well, if it wasn't Hoss, who was it? Well, Mr. Larkin. Lothario Larkin? You listen to me, Hoss. If that friend of yours comes within 10 miles of my daughter, I'll blow his head out of the county. You hear? You hear? You hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I hear. I hear. I hear, Abner. Yeah. All right, all right. You get down out of that story. I have never been so humiliated in all my born days. I am of age. I'll decide that. You get down here. And you, you remember what I said. <laughs> I'll, I'll, rem I'll remember, Abner. Every word. I swear I will. Every word. Yeah. Get up, get up. Oh, oh Ben. <laughs> I tell you, that there ain't no one in this whole wide world can fry up a mess of vittles like that hop sing. Beautiful. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll be very delighted when I tell him what you said. Lothario? Mm -hmm. How long are you uh, planning on staying around this time? Hmm. Just till the eh, till the edge sort of wears off, you know. Uh, just how sharp is the edge this time? No, oh. well, sorry. I'm, I'm going to have to give you a fair warning. If you go fooling around Virginia City again, I guarantee you we're going to have to cut you down from one of those cottonwood trees. Fooling around, Ben? Yep. Oh, Ben. Fooling around. 
Well, what would you call it? Well, I'd, I'd call it just being nice to people. You know, uh, being good to folks, uh, practicing the golden rule. Uh, sort of being unto others like you'd uh, have them be unto you. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Lothario. Now, you listen to me. There are folks right here in Virginia City who would laugh all the way to Boot Hill the day they buried you. Mike Gillis, for one. Why, he swears he'll tear you apart with his bare hands for leaving his Nancy crying her eyes out of the church. Nancy. <laughs> oh, she was a mighty pretty little girl. Took things too much for granted, though. I, I did feel sorry about that. I, I think I'll just mosey on over there. Now, you ain't gonna mosey nowhere. Lothario, I want some words with you. Oh, Hoss. <laughs> Come on in, Hoss. You must be hungry. No, I ain't hungry. But I'm mad enough to eat nails, that's what I am. Oh, who peeved you, Hoss? You. You peeved me. You dang near got me killed. That's what you done. Oh, what happened? Like that Abner Jones liked to blew me in half with that shotgun of his. That's what he done. <laughs> he, he thought you were, were Spark and Meg. <laughs> and what's so that burn funny? Uh, uh, <laughs> there's nothing funny. There's nothing funny. I think you and Meg are going to be very happy. Joseph, one of these days, I'm... Don't fret yourself, Nun Hoss. I'll just amble on over there and explain it to the old fella. No, Lothario, no, no, I don't want you to do that. As a matter of fact, I don't want you to set foot off of this Ponderosa. Now, I don't want to seem unhospitable, but I don't even want you going into Virginia City. Do you understand that? Not even on Saturday night? Especially not on Saturday nights. I can feel that, that Ed's starting to get duller already. You, you fellas, you don't like me around here, I guess. I, I might just as well pull on out of here in the morning. Now, I... now wait a minute, Lothario. We, we didn't mean that. Now, quit talking like that. Sure we like you, and we want you to stay here as long as you like. I mean, you're, you're welcome here. <laughs> oh, well, now, that, that's more like it, Hoss. That's that old Cartwright hospitality that's famous all over the territory. Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, Ben, I'm telling you, you've done an elegant job bringing up this big boy of yours. <laughs> yeah, didn't I? Oh, mm. I had a pretty long day. I guess I better turn in. Uh, I might sleep in a little in the morning. Why has I married? Sing sort of pretty. Uh, I was just tuning up your guitar, Hoss. Ah, uh, hey, mind. It's it's my brother Adams, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Anything on your mind? No, no, not particular. I just heard you down here singing. It sort of sounded sort of sort of lonesome like. Uh, I expect just sitting here in front of the fire looking at it make most anybody lonesome. Yeah. Sorry, you reckon I'm a Close enough friend to ask a couple of personal questions? I reckon. Well, Lothario, what makes you tick anyhow? I mean, all the drinking and fighting and carousing around with the women folk and getting in all sorts of trouble. I do got a knack, huh? <laughs> yeah, but the question is, is why do you do it? Well, I guess it's just my nature to love, Hoss. Huh? 
Of course, when a fellow's fixing to do a little loving, he's got to be prepared to do a little fighting, too. Yeah, but a fellow can't love all of them gals. I mean, that just ain't natural. It ain't. Well, no, I mean, that's just like a like an old cougar. Faithful to nobody and not an ounce of real love in him. Not an ounce. Well, leastwise, when a cougar does go, he, he don't leave no tears, no sadness behind him. Leastwise, like that old cat, you're always running and chasing, ain't you? Larry, are you chasing after something, or are you running away from something? Is there a Laura Lee? No, oh, maybe. Long time. A lot of miles ago. Something, something happened to her? Something happened to her, all right. Run into a fancy-talking fella, and he filled her with a pack of sweet talk and big lies, and she run off with him. I ain't never seen her since. So that's it. That's why you're playing the cougar game. You're gonna get back at all the women folk, ain't you? Oh, no, Hoss, that ain't it. Uh, that ain't it at all. It's just that I, well, I, I keep hoping and hoping that, that maybe someday, in some way, I might run into that same kind of love again. Leastwise, a fella's gotta keep trying, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon he has. Well, good night, old cougar. Good night, Hoss. Hey, did you hear that Lothario singing last night? Yeah, he sings pretty good, yeah, I was surprised. Yeah. What do we have to do today? Hey, Paul! Well, I don't know. Paul? He's gone. He's gone, Adam's guitar and all. God burned his ornery hide. It's all my fault for calling him a cougar. Started him thinking all over again. I want you to go out there, I want you to find him, and I want you to bring him back if you have to drag him every inch of the way. And tomorrow, we escort him to Carson City personally. Right. It ain't gonna be easy, Paul. He could be anywhere in the territory. It's for sure he ain't gonna go back to Virginia City and run the risk of getting arrested by Roy. Well, no. you just find him. All right, you go out and help find him. Me? You. Here. Come on, yes, Joe, we sir. gotta hurry. That's dang Lothario you can get in more trouble accidentally than most folks can on purpose. You're right, hurry up, hurry up. Him and his friends. Him yeah. and his friends. No, right. Go ahead, go up with it. Thank you, ma'am. Why did you run away? When you left me, standing in the church, something went out of me, something warm and beautiful. How could you have done it? How could you? I've been whooping myself ever since, ma'am. Have you, Lothario? Have you? Then why did you do it? That's what I come back for, was, was to explain what happened. What did happen? Uh, I got thinking that a, a fella like me just ain't good enough for a beautiful girl like you. Well, that's not true. Why, you... Nancy! Nancy! It's Pa! Help me down, quick! Nancy! You! I gotta get going. I'll explain later. Oh, no, no, if you touch one hair on Lothario's head, I'll never speak to you again. I ain't gonna touch a hair on his head. I'm gonna break every bone in his back. If you do, I'll, I'll hold my breath. I'll hold my breath forever. Take that side of the street over there, and I'll take this side. 
Well, we've been looking for that cougar all day. This is the last place to look. I never figured he'd be fool enough to come in here. It's the last place we can look. You look yourself. I'm going to go home. I'm tired. I'll raise a hundred. Lothario! <laughs> Put that bottle right up here, Barkey. Come on, belly up to the bar, ladies. I got me a thirst bigger than a bale of smoked oysters. <laughs> Hurry up with that. Pour a nut. Excuse me, I'm very tired. Now, don't you forget, the past is dead. Or he is. You understand? Where have you been? Oh, you know, around <laughs> here and there. <laughs> Lothario! Hoss, compadre! <laughs> Don't you compadre me now. Dad burn it, I'm sore. How come you to run off now, anyhow? Hoss, simmer down, simmer down. Have a drink. Here, here. here. I, I don't want no drink. Well, all right, then. <laughs> Check me out. I, I'm going to bed. Hoss, you know, them four walls of yours, well, they just kept closing in on me like a cage they was. It, it was almost like a jailer, sort of cramp my style. A, a fella like me's got the... A fe... Ma'am? Oh, no. No, no, Lothario. That's a married woman. Now, come on. If the sheriff gets you here, you're in trouble. It's that old friend, Hoss. This is different. Ma'am? Ma'am? If it's poker you want, I'm through for the evening. Oh, I don't want any poker. Come on, Lothario. You're just going to get in trouble. Then what do you want? Is your name Laura? Who are you? Larkin. Lothario Larkin. <laughs> you must be joking. Oh, I ain't joking. And all this time I've been looking forward to meeting you. The great lover, the, the legend of the hinterland. Well, let me give you a piece of advice, mister. Stay out here in the country. You ever get near a civilized woman, she'd laugh at you. Because you're really very funny, Mr. Larkin. Uh, I... I ain't trying to be funny. I just want to talk to you. We have nothing to talk about. And uh, a word to the wise, Mr. Larkin. Don't try to step up in class. Stay with your saloon girls. They'll talk to anyone with the price of a drink. Good night. said. <laughs> Lothario Larkin. mistake when she named him that. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> An old friend, huh? Old friends like that you don't need. Let me tell you something. You've been lucky. Gal's been treating me like that all my life. Ain't made me feel no worse. Come on, let's go home. Get on your feet, Larkin. Now, Mike, wait a minute. He ain't doing nothing except sitting here and having a nice, peaceful drink. Oh, he ain't, ain't he? I caught him out behind the barn this morning a courting my daughter. Lothario, you didn't. Yeah, he did. And a couple hours later, he was sparking my daughter. And you know it, Hoss. Now, wait a minute, fellas. There ain't no cause to make a ruckus. Lothario, he, he ain't feeling too good, no how. Well, he's gonna feel a whole lot worse. Fellers! Fellers! Wait! Come on, Lothario. There ain't but two of them. Fight back! Come on, baby. Throw those old guys out of here and let's get a little party going. <laughs> Come on, Lothario. What's the matter? Are you too tired to fight? Fellers! Dad, burn it. 
Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That burn it. You can see he ain't fighting back. What do you want to do, kill him? That's the idea. All right, Mike, you're going to have to come through me. Wait a minute, Abner. Wait a minute, Abner. Sir, wait a minute. Sir. Burn it. I'm going to have to hit you, Abner. If you want me to hit you, I'm going to hit you. Hold it. Well, if this ain't a heartwarming little tableau, if I ever did see one. Looks like you gentlemen wants to have a little difference of opinion. And we can straighten that out all over to my place. Come on, you all know where the jail is. Come on, Abner. Oh, I'm surprised at you. When the leading citizens of this town. Mike, I'm surprised at you. And Hoss Cartwright. If your pa could only see you now. Come on, you ain't no exception. Don't give me that but face, Ben and Binnis. Go on. You know where it is. And Mr. Lock, you always do seem to brighten up this little old dull town of ours. Now get! And Lothario, you forgot your guitar. His guitar. Man that lives as dangerous as he does ought to take up the harp. I hope you gentlemen slept good. That'll be $25. 25 Well, it was worth it. Was it worth it to you, Mike? You're a bandit, Coffee. You! Get out of town before you get yourself killed. Abner, you want to try for the $50? It might be worth that, too. Uh, come on, Mike. Don't worry, none. Paul will be here after a while to bail us out. I took a good look at myself last night. Does a fellow good to see himself the way he really is sometimes? <laughs> Funny old clown, scarecrow, flopping around, making empty sounds in the wind. <sighs> Tell me something, Hoss. How can a fellow as, as ugly as me fool himself for so long? Oh, dead bird. Oh, Lothario, you ain't ugly. You ain't no scarecrow or no clown, neither. That woman over there at the saloon, that Laura, that gambling woman. She ain't nothing. She ain't nothing but a tin horn. Don't you say that, Hoss. Don't you never say that. But sorry, I... Man? I... Well, you boys certainly covered yourselves with glory, didn't you? How much, Roy? Twenty-five dollars a head. Twenty-five? Well, it may seem a mite high, but we're limited on space. Here's your 50. All right, Hoss. Congratulations. You too, Lothario. I ain't going. You give me 30 days, and I'm going to sit right here and serve him. What's the matter with him? He ain't been himself, Paul. Hey, come on, Lothario. We'll, we'll go get us some breakfast, and then you'll feel a heap better. Come on. No, sir. I know my rights. I'm going to stay right here. Now, you give me any more trouble, and I'll give you 60 days. Thank you, Sheriff. Well, he's not going to give you any trouble staying in there. You want a bed? Look, Lothario, your fine has been paid. Any time you want to leave, you're free to leave. Come on, Hoss. Yes, sir. What happened? Oh, he's been like that ever since he had that run-in with that Laura over there at the Sazerac. Man, she lit into him something fierce. Yeah, well, anybody plays around as much as that Lothari does is bound to get chewed out once in a while. Oh, I got a feeling this is different. I got a notion that this is the same Laura he loved. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's none of our business. Look, I'm going to get me a shave and a haircut. You coming? No, Paul, wait a minute. If it is the same Laura, and they did once know each other, and sort of liked each other. Oh, she's a married woman, isn't she? Well, yeah, You but... know she is. Now, when it comes to men and women folk, it's a wise man that doesn't stick his nose where it doesn't belong. Yeah. Anyhow, I'd like to know if that's the same Larry he sings about in that song. Uh -huh. I'll see you. It broke my heart the way she ripped into him, Hoss. Yeah. Hey, look, Francine. You being a woman, maybe you could tell me why. 
Why'd she light into him so anyhow? Well, there's two reasons that'll make a woman cut up a man pretty bad, Hoss. She either hates him or she loves him and can't have him. And something tells me she don't hate him. Yeah, me too. That burned it if she just wasn't married. She ain't. She ain't? She ain't married? How do you know that? Well, like you say, Hoss, me being a woman, I'm nosy. And it kind of bothered me when I saw she was living in one room and he was living in another. So I asked her. Francine, I, I just love a nosy gal. Excuse me. A fella could get in a lot of trouble sticking his nose where it don't belong. Yeah, Paul told me that. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what Paul told me. Come in. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. It's all right, come in. What do you want? I want to I want to talk to you about a about a mutual friend of ours. Lothario Larkin. That, that clown who was here last night? Ma'am, he uh, he ain't no clown and you know it. He's very much in love with you. You out of your mind. I never saw the man before last night. Ever since you ran away from him, he's been searching for you. You or somebody like you, grieving his heart out. Will you get out of here? Not until you promise you'll come over and tell him that you didn't mean all those things you said to him the other night. I mean the whole world to him. I told you, I never saw the man before. Now get out of here and leave me alone. Yes, sir. I reckon I did make a mistake at that. I'm sorry to have been any bother to you, ma'am. And I'm sorry you're not that other Laura, too. Sorry for both of you. I'm sorry, too. That's the girl he's looking for, Hoss. She died a long time ago. What you're looking at now is just a cheap imitation. I'm, I'm leaving today, Hoss. Just tell him he made a mistake. No, ma'am. You're the one that's making a mistake, Laura. Not him. The girl in this picture's still very much alive. All you gotta do is wash some of that paint off your face and put on a nice, simple dress like this one. You wouldn't be a bit different than you were when you were both together. Come on. Like I said, I'll be waiting for you downstairs. If you know what's good for you, you'll get out of town and keep going, Hoss. Found you in my wife's bedroom. That's legal grounds for killing, Hoss. That's right. If she were really your wife. The man's got a point. Ma'am, I'll see you down. <coughs> like I said, ma'am, I'll meet you downstairs. Kill him, so help me, I'll kill him. You'll have no cause to kill anyone, Johnny. We're going away today, together. Hi, Roy. Hey, the 
are you? Come on. Come on. She still loves you. I know she does. Now, you got to tell her right now because she's leaving town. This is your last chance. Come I on. don't feel nothing. Come on. Hey, down here. No. Hey, Sheriff. This fellow's trying to bust me out of jail. That's against the law, ain't it? Oh, for gosh sakes, Roy, will you tell him? Well, fine. Well, didn't you hear me? I heard you, Hoss. Well, of all the hard-headed, can taker, stubborn jackasses I ever run into in my life, you take the blue ribbon. All right. All right. Fine, Sheriff, you turned out to be. You can't even bust a man out of your own jail. I heard you, Hoss. I heard you. I want you to go over to the preacher's house. Get him. There's going to be a wedding. Lothario is going to get married. Oh, oh I said, I'm getting him. Lothario's getting married? Yep. It's going to be a church wedding. Get the preacher. A hurry. church wedding? Ain't that nice? Hey, Dave, Dave, hurry up and finish me up here. Been over to see him, haven't you? No, I. I didn't see him. You're a liar. <coughs> I told you I didn't see him. I said I want the truth. <coughs> all right, Johnny, I've had about all of you I'm going to put up with. Hadn't been for you, there wouldn't have been no trouble in the first place. Now, you get out of here before I break you in half. Get. Look out, horse. Johnny, you had enough? Let's go. 
No, I... I don't want to see him. Ma'am. Oh! oh, come on. Let me out of here. Please let me out. I want out! Uh, Roy, what do you say me and you step outside where it's a little more peaceful and quiet, huh? I huh? want out! Oh, yeah, it is kind of noisy in there, isn't it? Yeah. Please let me out. What did you do that they throwed you in here? I didn't do anything. That, that big lump just picked me up and... Oh, horse. Oh, you're wondering about the door. They wouldn't lock me up. Don't you worry. I, I'll get them to let you right out. You haven't changed a bit, Lothario. Oh, I expect not. Same funny old clown, funny old lover. I didn't mean those things. You didn't? Hmm. You look tired. Well, it's been a lot of years, a lot of miles. And a lot of women. <sighs> if, um... You don't mind my saying so, ma'am. You're, you're more beautiful than ever. It's, it's time you knew the truth about me, so you can be rid of me once and for all. I, I, I'm not at all the girl you knew a long time ago. There have been too many towns, too many saloons, too many back rooms. Never a wedding. You mean you ain't never been married? I'm leaving today, Lothario. Now that you know, you can forget all about that girl you once loved. Oh, no, ma'am. You, you was right about one thing. You ain't nothing like that little girl. She didn't know nothing about living or loving or sharing. She was just a little girl. But you're a grown-up woman. I love that little girl, but I could just worship that woman if she let me. Don't you see? We're we're sort of like two peas in a pod, you and me. We we've done about everything there is to do, and we've been about every place there is to go, except home. never married you. Excuse me, ma'am. Hey, Lothario, I've got the pink. Isn't he the gentleman that I... Oh, Hoss, I, I found the pink. to the powers vested in me, I do hereby declare my intentions of joining these two together in the holy bonds of matrimony. If anyone objects, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Well, I do. You shut up!
Go ahead, Reverend. Do you, Laura, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. And do you, Lothario, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? Yes, I do. Uh, ring. So be it. I do hereby pronounce you man and wife. Well, also, compadre, I'll be seeing you. Yeah, well, uh, don't rush. Don't rush, Lothario. Uh -huh. You just have a nice honeymoon. All right. So long, Ben. Yeah. So long. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good time. Bye. That's what it is. Yep. And the end of a cougar, huh, Paul? <laughs> you know, we're going to miss that little fella. Yeah, well, you come along with me, Cupid, because the champagne's on you. All right. I wore these for 10 years, Mr. Dorn. The territory of Nevada says that pays me up for what I did. I know you don't figure it that way, but I'm free now, and I'm back. And I'm here to stay. Get out of this town. I told you, Mr. Dorn. I'm here to stay. Grace? What, Mr. Cartwright? Uh, welcome home. I don't need anything from you, Mr. Cartwright. I don't need anything from any of you. Ah! 
That boy's real trouble. You sure you're looking at the right man, Roy? Say now, some mash and uh, some corn. Oh, <laughs> you better keep that down to 50 pounds this week, Seth. <laughs> Hop Singh says if those chickens get any fatter, they'll start looking like hoss. <laughs> Anything else, Ben? Something wrong? I think there is, Seth. All right, if you want to know. I didn't think you should have done what you did out there on the street a little while ago. I mean, going over to Trace Cordell and offering him your hand that way, right in front of Paul Dorn. Oh, would you rather I did it behind Paul's back? Oh, you know what I mean, Ben. Yes, I think I do. I thought you were a friend of Paul's. I am. Well, then why'd you do it, Ben? Because I believe that when a man has served his prison sentence for something that he's done, that should be the end of it. Oh, well, that's easy enough for you to say. But if you were the one that Trace has put in the wheelchair for the rest of your life, you'd feel just like Paul does. I hope not, Seth. Trace Cordell's got a lot of gall coming Seth, back. Seth, that was ten years ago. Trace Cordell was hardly 17 years old, and you knew his ma and him just as well as I did. Are you excusing him for what he did? I'm not excusing him for anything. When Trace went into that bank, I don't believe he intended to rob it. <gasps> oh, nothing. Trace was a desperate, frightened boy with a dying mother. He had a gun. He shot Paul. He made a cripple out of him. No, oh, what's the use of talking? Oh, my boy will pick up this stuff tomorrow. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I've been looking for you. I have a message from Mr. Dorn. It's for you too, Mr. Hubble. He'd like you to be at his house tonight at 7 o'clock. What for? He's invited about 20 of the leading citizens in town to a meeting. A meeting? It's about Trace Cordell, but laying plans to keep him from settling down in Virginia City. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, Trace has every right to stay in this town if he wants to. He has to work if he wants to stay here. He has to eat. Of course he does. But he won't be able to do either one, not in this town. He won't be able to get a job slopping pigs. He won't be able to buy so much as a pound of beans. People in this town will freeze him out. Now what makes you the spokesman for the people in this town? After last year's drought, do you know how many merchants and ranchers around here owe the bank money on demand notes? Yes, I'm beginning to find that out, Paul. A man fights with everything he has to fight with. A man? Yes. Well, you're not fighting like the man that you used to be. I'm not the man I used to be. Look at me. Cordell got 10 years, but I got life. Cordell is free, but I'm still paying. Oh, please. Oh, now we hear from my helpmate. You agree with Ben. Forgive and forget. Well, I haven't forgotten. And I won't forget how you and Cordell used to hold hands walking down the street like a couple of moon-calf lovers. Paul. If you ever so much as look at Trace Cordell again, I swear I'll... I used to think there wasn't a man in town who felt as sorry for you. For what happened to you, as I did. I was wrong. I don't feel nearly as sorry for you as you do for yourself.
just thought I'd uh, stop by and see how things were. Yeah. Got any plans? What you gonna do? Get a crop in. Raise some stock. Well, of course, that's, uh, that's gonna take time. Where I've been, Mr. Cartwright, a man learns that there's just one way he's ever gonna make it. That's just one day at a time. I don't think it's gonna be that simple here. I know. I got the message coming through town, if that's what you mean. Dawn's a bitter man. Maybe you might be better off if you went somewhere new where they didn't know you and started fresh. The way I figure it, if I can't be free here, I won't be free anywhere. Besides, I want to lick this place. Broke my father's back and my mother's heart. For their sake, I'd like to make the farm work. Well, like I said, you're going to need a steak. Now, it just so happens that uh, we're a little shorthand in the Ponderosa, and I could sure use you and your rig. I told you, Mr. Cartwright, I don't need any help. Now, you listen to me, Trace. I know the Cordell pride. Your father had it. Your mother had it. Is there anything wrong with pride, Mr. Cartwright? The Cordell kind? Yes. But this farm didn't break your father. His pride broke him. This farm didn't break your mother. Her pride broke her. Now, wait a minute. And it's breaking you, too. Well, you didn't learn a thing in the ten years you were in prison, did you? I tried to help you. The whole town tried to help you. But that Cordell pride of yours wouldn't allow for help. Why, you wouldn't ask for help when your mother was dying. You had to try to steal for her. Why are you talking like this? Because I think it's about time that you discovered the difference between friendship and charity. I'm not offering you charity. I'm offering you a job. Mr. Cartwright. Yes? When do I start? First thing in the morning. Well, that's it. Trey starts work first, first thing in the morning. What good's he gonna do Paul Doran to run Trace Cordell out of town? Well, keep him away from Clara, for one thing. Don't forget they were almost married before this thing happened. <laughs> sure were. You know, I can understand Paul's bitterness being confined to that wheelchair and all, but... I sure hoped he'd be a bigger man than that. What sort of job you got figured out for Trace, anyhow? Well, you know that hay we sold the army? Well, it's got to be stored, and the army has rented Luke Schaefer's barn in town. I figured we could store it there, and then the quartermaster could pick it up anytime he wants it. So we use Trace. Well, one man with a rig making a trip a day, you could complete the job in plenty of time. Paul, don't you think Trace making a trip into town every day is going to be sort of asking for trouble? Well, there's a possibility of trouble whether you ask for it or not. And Trace might as well face up to it now as later. That's all right, Mr. Cartwright. I'd like that job. Well, Trace, there's uh, one thing that I think you ought to know. There were 20 men at that meeting that Dorn called last night. And they represent the feeling of the whole town, and they all agreed that you shouldn't be allowed to settle in Virginia City. That doesn't scare me, Mr. Cartwright. Well, maybe I made it sound a little worse than it is. Some of them have to go along with Dorn, others want to, and the others just don't know any better. <laughs> well, I'm not going to make it any easier for them by staying out of sight. Oh, no one's asking you to. The choice is yours, Trace. Where is that hay you wanted hauled? <laughs> Come on. the sheriff minute last night when he said not to give any trouble to Cordell. Hey, Mr. Schaefer? 
Yeah? Mr. Cartwright asked me to deliver this hay to you. Pull it in here. You gonna give me a hand with this? I got a contract with the Army to store that feed, but that don't mean I gotta work with the likes of you, Cordell. No, you want help unloading, you tell Ben Cartwright to send a man in with you from now on. I'll do that. Why don't you move on, Cordell? Why don't you get out of town before somebody takes a bull whip to you? They have. Many times in the last ten years. How about this one? It's real pretty. I seem to remember you having one just this color. That was that, that Easter time before I went away. That was a long time ago, Trace. I, I walked you home from church. Your mother had me stay to dinner. Later, your, your pa let us use the buggy. We drove out to Sunset Falls. We don't have anything to say to each other anymore, Trace. What do you want, Cordell? Mr. Cartwright asked me to pick up some supplies he ordered yesterday. Well, you go back and tell Ben to send somebody else. I don't want you setting foot in my store, do you understand? I understand. Then get out and stay out. The Army rents this barn of yours for you to store hay in it, is that right? Yeah. And if you don't store any hay in it, you don't collect any rent, is that right? Guess so. Guess so. All right, then. You better start helping Trace Cordell unload my hay when he brings it here. When the Army comes here to pick it up, it's going to find an empty barn. Now, do I make my meaning clear? Look. Yeah. Yeah. Seth, how much do you figure I spend in this store of yours a year? Around 3,000, I guess, figuring everything. Mm -hmm. Well, until Trace Cordell gets a little common courtesy from you, you're going to have to count on 3,000 a year less. Well, that ain't fair, Ben. Fair? You consider what you've been doing fair? Well, that's different with you. You're a rich man. You don't need Paul Dorn. You don't owe him anything. You owe Paul? <sighs> uh, I guess I've been... Going at this the wrong way, haven't I? Maybe I ought to go where, where the sickness starts. Don't you think you ought to discuss this with Mr. Dorn, Mr. Cartwright? What's this all about? Mr. Cartwright wants to transfer his account to the Miners and Cattlemen Bank in Gold Hill. What's Mr. Cartwright's balance? Take care. But Mr. Dorn... Do it. Ben. This hurts, you know that. Well, like you said, Paul, a man fights with anything he has. Cordell's nothing to you. Why are you making this your fight? I think this is everybody's fight, Paul. There's no middle ground. You're on one side or the other. Even if it costs men like us our friendship? At the price you're asking. I don't think I can afford your friendship.
was out for a ride. I stopped for a rest. Nice spot. Yes. Do you come here often? Yes. I used to fish that stream. A little further down, Forbes Mill. I can remember when the trout used to practically stand in line to get caught. But that was a long time ago. Trace? I've never been here before. I was waiting for you. I'm sorry about the way you're being treated in town. I told you I understood. Trace, why didn't you write me? Why didn't you answer my letters? I couldn't. Why not? Well, it's hard to explain, Clara. You don't know what it's like living in prison. You can't let yourself feel anything. You can't let yourself remember how it was before, what it might be afterwards. I saw a boy once. I watched him count the days for five years. He killed a guard, tried to escape a week before his sentence was up. I counted the days for five years, too. I'm sorry, Clara. After mother and father died, there wasn't anyone left. I know what it is to be alone. I understand why you married. No, you don't. Maybe I did marry him because I was lonely and afraid. But I also thought I could help because of what happened to him. I also married him because I was angry. Angry at you. For spoiling everything. All our dreams of getting married. I better get onto the ranch. Trace. I didn't love him. I still don't love him. I love you. I'm not ashamed of it. Grace, take me away with you. I'll go anywhere you say, just take me with you. Grace! Grace! Ah, do you remember what day of the week this is? I guess not. <laughs> day day. I know it's been a long week, but the weeks will get shorter. I'm not so sure, Mr. Cartwright. Hey, what's the matter? You, you sound kind of down in the mouth. Well, it isn't that exactly. It's just that, well, I guess I've been wondering whether it's all worth it. Virginia City isn't the only place in the world. You know, I recall having that discussion with you when you first got back. I know. And maybe you were right. Maybe I would be better off somewhere else. You're the only one who can... Really be the judge of that. to Gold Hill on business. He won't be back until tomorrow. Come inside. What are we going to do, Trace? What would you have done if I hadn't come back? You did come back. You'd have gone on being Dawn's wife. What are you trying to say? If we went away together, where would we go? Does it matter? We belong here. We belong anywhere we can be together. 
And it can't be here. You don't want to leave Virginia City, do you? Not yet. Why not? Everything stopped for me here. This is where I've got to begin again. Is that really important to you? I thought it was. I don't know anymore. Well, you'll have to decide. Clara? Are you really as sure of yourself as you say you are? You've been married to Dawn for five years. Can you just stop being his wife without any doubts, any questions? It's getting late. I better go. I'll be waiting for you. Mr. Dorn, I thought you were staying in Gold Hill tonight. I changed my mind. Maybe it's a good thing. Deke, you asked the other day if Sheriff Coffey meant it when he warned against any rough stuff with Cordell. Yeah? Well, maybe tomorrow you ought to take a couple of your friends and find out. Glad that miserable job is over. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm gonna get a beer.
done to you? I'm all right. I came here as soon as I heard. I've made up my mind, Clara. We're going to leave town. Where are we going to go? You said it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. When? Tomorrow night. I'll meet you at town at, at Schaefer's barn, 9 o'clock. You still want to go, don't you? From the moment you came back into town, all I needed was the courage to admit it. I heard, too. I thought I could help. Now that you're here, I suppose you could take care of him. I've got to get back to town. I'll make sure he gets back all right. Goodbye, Therese. Goodbye, Mr. Cartwright. pretty good, didn't they? Obviously Dorn's men. Could you identify them? In this town? What good would it do? Well, Sheriff Coffey could arrest the men responsible. Could he put the whole town in jail? The whole town isn't to blame, Trace. Isn't it? Well, anyway, nothing like this will happen again. From now on, any time you go out, one of us will be with you. That won't be necessary, Mr. Cartwright. Well, you let me be the judge of that now. I'd like to ask a favor. Sure. I'd like you to buy my farm. I'm leaving Virginia City. Oh. Sorry to hear that. That, uh, that first day, you came back, you said something. Yeah. If I can't feel free here, I can't feel free anywhere. I was wrong. Will you buy my place? Uh, that's a good piece of land. Worked properly, it could be a good investment. How much? Three dollars an acre. It's worth more than that. Not to me. I come by the Ponderosa tomorrow. Thanks. Thank me. I got a goodbye. When do you plan on leaving? Tonight. Alone? Yeah, you're going off with Clara Dawn, aren't you? Well, it won't work, Trace. It just won't work. You can fool yourself now, but you can't fool yourself forever. One day you're going to wake up hating yourself for what you did, and then you wind up hating each other. If you thought Clara was going away with me, why did you give me the money? One doesn't have anything to do with the other. I agree to buy your farm because, well, you want to leave Virginia City, and that's all right if you want to. But that doesn't mean you have the right to run off with another man's wife, no matter how much he wants to go with you. I didn't say I was going to do that. Anyway, it's, it's my life. I've got a right to do what I want with it.
Where's Trace going? How come he ain't working? If he's afraid to go into town because of them jesters, one of us could ride in with him. No, no, he's not afraid. He's just leaving. Well, what about his farm? I just bought his farm. Why? Well, I figure if a man has the right to stay if he wants to, he has the right to leave if he wants to, so I'm helping him leave. Well, what made him change his mind? I don't know for sure. I think I'll go over to his place after supper. out of here. Paul, please listen. Take her to the house. Keep her there. Paul, please let me explain. Paul! Hey! Oh, please hurry. Get yeah, Paul's gonna kill Trace. What is he? He's in Schaefer's barn.
Trace, <laughs> help me, Trace, please, please, Trace, help me, Trace, help me, help me, Trace, Trace, don't leave, <laughs> don't go, Trace, help me, help me. <laughs> Trace, help me! Help me, please! Help me! Help me! Get back! Get back! Come in. I was expecting the sheriff. How do you feel? You know, you and Trace both pretty lucky. An accident like that could have been fatal. Accident. And that's what Trace told the sheriff it was. What's he trying to pull now? I wanted to kill him, I admit it. Why is he lying to the sheriff? <sighs> Why do you think that Trace went to Luke Schaefer's barn last night? Meet my wife, take her away. Well, he uh, he went to to meet your wife, all right, but not to take her away. He went to tell her that he was leaving without her, that he'd finally realized that she wasn't in love with him. I should have let them meet, so he could have told her he was leaving. Would serve her right. Oh, Paul, what's the matter with you? Is your hate so completely blinded you that you can't see what's in front of your face? Now, when you, when you went to the barn, you saw Clara. What was she wearing, a traveling dress? Did she have any bags that were packed, any, any luggage? Was she prepared to leave? No. Because she'd gone to the barn 
to tell Trace that she wasn't leaving for the same reason. She couldn't have told you that. She's been upstairs in her room ever since the fire. Yeah, you know, she couldn't have told me, but when Trace pulled you out of there, you were both lying unconscious on the ground. And to which one of you do you think she went? Which one? Let her tell you yourself. Do you hear that? No, oh, I don't hear nothing. Oh, come on, Harry. You're as spooky as a fox in a forest fire. Settle down. Well, I don't know. I got a feeling something's wrong. Howdy, fellas. Howdy. Howdy. Harry, this here is George Whitman. He's a new hand we put on. Howdy. Ain't I seen you somewhere as a four? I don't think so. George Whitman. He, he's the one they call the Jinx. Oh, come on, Harry. Everything's quiet, fool. They're yours. Good enough. Uh, see you in the morning. Come on, Harry. Let's go. Is, uh, is that true? Huh? What old Harry says about you being a Jinx? Some folks think so. Well, what do you think? I don't know. Hmm. Well, uh, just in case, uh, you stay here. I'll do the circling. Horse! I've been thinking on it. Now, you better listen to me. I know. I worked the full spread with that George Whitman, and we had nothing but trouble. Now, Harry, that's a bunch of nonsense, and you know it, that burn it. Besides, we need all the hands around here we can get. Come on, let's turn in. But I'm telling you now, I got a feeling. Look, Harry, if you happen to see any witches flying by the moon tonight, don't wake me up and tell me about it. Wait till morning, will you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stampede! Stampede! On your feet! Stampede! say you will be happily married. What else do they say? They say you will have many children. Mia. Mm -hmm. Make it two. Whiskey. Hello, Susan. Hello, Jim. Buy a drink? All right. Bartender? Might I watch? No, not at all. How have you been, Charlie? Right, Prime. Hey, Harry, what happened to you? 
No, got caught right dag nab in the middle of a cattle stampede. It'll be all right in a day or two. Hey, I hear the Cartwright's hard on George Whitman. Yeah, this week. We had him on the box W. You fellas are in for it. How so? Ain't you heard? Whitman's bad luck. There, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now maybe you'll believe me. Everywhere he goes, trouble. One of you better tell the Cartwrights. Well, now, don't you think I haven't? Don't make no difference to them. They don't know the forces that's in him. Oh, Harry. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell both of you something. Now, if you was to look into George Whitman's eyes, you'd see evil things staring in his soul beyond all understanding. But don't ever look him dead straight in the eye. Why not? Because that's how he puts a sign on you. Well, I ain't afraid of nothing I can't see or touch. Well, you'll see. You'll see. Uh, they wouldn't believe me. I told him it was a Jonah. Uh, hello, Joe. How you doing? Hoss. Howdy, boys. I'll buy you. Order me a beer, will you, Hoss? Yeah. A couple of beers, Cottonwool. Hi, Susan. Hi. Is that, uh, is that dark-haired lady I'm supposed to meet showing up yet? If you want to, we can look again. Yeah, sir, I'll give her a day or two. Three beers, Hoss. Yeah. Thank you, Cottonwool. Boss? Hey, I used to stay here and get jinxed. What do you mean by that? Watch out, superstitious. Excuse me. George? Oh, hello, Susan. I heard about the stampede. I just wanted to make sure you didn't get hurt or anything. <clears throat> no, I'm all right. Cheer up, honey. I don't know why you waste your time on a guy like that anyway. You're right. Well, it sure isn't the way I'd handle it, George. Me either. George, what in tarnations matter to you anyhow? All that little girl wanted was just to be friendly. Back you leave me alone. Oh, horse, horse. I'm sorry. I just never should have gone in there in the first place. I'd like to know why not. Because I got a hex on me, that's why not. Well, come on, will you, George? There's no such thing. No? I'm the 13th child of a 13th child. I got 13 letters in my name. I was born on February the 13th. What a bunch of baloney. Well, it's true. I've been bad luck to everybody I've ever been around. I thought that on the Ponderosa, things might be different, but after last night, it just seems to me like it's starting all over again. I just can't take the chance of anything bad happening to her, too. George! Come on. There's nothing you can say to him. Let's finish our beers. We're gonna get rid of you. Hey, what's going on here? That's that Jonah I was telling you about. He almost got horse killed. 
Oh, boy, there wasn't nothing to it. It only just spooked a little bit, that's all. Mr. Carwright, I'd like to uh, pick up my time. Well, you've only been with us a couple of days. Well, yes, sir, I know, but uh, I'd like to quit. Well, of course, uh, <clears throat> it's your privilege, but I'd sure like to know why. Well, I've caused enough trouble around here already. I'd like to move on before I, there's any more. Well, George, as far as we're concerned, that's no reason to leave it all. Well, Mr. Cartwright, let him go. We don't want him around here anymore. <clears throat> Seems to be some doubt as to who's running this Ponderosa. Is there? Because if there isn't, I'd sure like the privilege of deciding who stays and who goes. Yeah, but, Mr. Cartwright, this fella's just plain bad news. He's already put the sign on me and Hoss. Yeah, me too. I'm not running this ranch according to hexes or voodoos or hoodoos or any other kind of claptrap. As long as George Whitman does his work, does it right, he gets paid and he stays. I'm not so sure we want to work with him anymore. Well, of course, that puts a different complexion on things, doesn't it? Well, if any of you is so scared of old wives' tales that you're willing to give up a good job, I'll be willing to pay off right now. Uh, no, there's no need. Oh, come on, let's get back to work. That was a mighty nice thing you did, Mr. Cartwright, but uh, I still think I ought to move on. I don't want anything to happen to you people. Well, that's uh, it's mighty nice here, George, but uh, why don't you let us take our chances? Yeah, I kind of believe that a man makes his own luck. It's different with me. Well, you, you just saved my life. You figure that's bad luck? I was closest one to you. Anybody would have done that. It was my bad luck it happened in the first place. All right. You, uh, you think that you're bad luck, hmm? Jonah, all right? All right? I'm kind of surprised at you. I mean, why don't you do something about it? How can you just accept it? Why don't you do something to change it? If only I could. Well, of course you can. You can try. All right. I will. Well, George, I'm glad you made that decision. Yeah, I, uh... Do you think it'd be all right if I went into town later today? Well, I reckon so. Why? Well, I kind of... I got this idea. Do, do you want to come along? Yeah, just soon do. Hey, what? George Whitman, the cards say you are very troubled. Well, uh, ma'am, we already knew that. That's that's how come we came in. I have known for some time. You have? You mean you've known about this and you ain't tried to help him? These gifts are not to be given lightly. They are to be sought after. You mean you know about me being bad luck and all? Well, George, it ain't exactly no big secret, you know. Right now, you are wondering if I can help you. I've tried rabbit's feet and four-leaf clovers and... Playthings. The curse of number 13 requires a charm of unusual power. And I, uh, I suppose you got one. I mean, some kind of mumbo-jumbo, huh? You mean a charm? It will not be easy. Oh, ma'am, I'll try just anything at all. There is a charm that works without fail, but it will cost two dollars. Oh, yeah. uh, Hoss, have, uh, have, you, have you got some money on you? Yeah. Thanks. 
I will write it out for you. You cannot make this yourself. It must be done by someone who is close to you. Uh, Hoss? Yeah, I'll do it for you, Georgie. You'll probably find most of this stuff without a whole lot of trouble. I don't know how to thank you, ma'am. Let's go, Hoss. Hoss? Oh, yeah. You must follow that very closely. Or else... Or else what? Now, don't worry about it, George. I'll take care of everything. Hey, look, George, why don't you run along and I'll try to gather some of this stuff up and I'll join you after a while, all right? All right. Yeah. Howdy, Miss Susan. Hello, Hoss. Miss Susan, I... I want to tell you something. Old, old George is, he's real fond of you. It takes a very funny way of showing it. Yes, ma'am. Look, me and him's going to be in town Saturday night, see? I couldn't be less interested. Well, now, you might be surprised. There's liable to be a big change in old George. I just thought I'd tell you in case you wanted to get all spruced up or something. See you. No. That doesn't look like a goat's horn to me. Uh, bad burn it, George. I got that from Granny Greer. She says it's goat horn, it's goat horn. Now, got the dried bat wings. Yeah. Got the snake skin. Uh-huh. And we got the feathers from the owl's eye. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe, I haven't seen such a conglomeration of stuff since you and Hoss tried to follow one of Hopsing's recipes. Yeah. Only difference is I think this might taste better. Oh, we, we <laughs> might as well try it if it might make old George feel better. The sky right. Rustlers hit us last night. How many? We got 31 head of prize stock. Stampeded them right out of Box Canyon. Well, did anybody get hurt? No, nobody. Well, it's a wonder. Oh, it. Harry, will you stop it? Come on, let's start tracking them down. Everybody, let's move. Get my horse for me, Joe. You hear? Where the Indians put their dead, isn't it, Hoss? Yeah. Well, why don't we move on? It's getting late. Yeah, wait a minute. It's a good place for me to pick up that graveyard dust. Charm I'm making for you. If I'm gonna make it, I might as well make it right, isn't I? Yeah, well, hurry up. It's spooky here. This will do it nice. Well, it saved me a trip to town. Listen here, I can't make out. What is that? Uh, that looks like a has hassle fever, a hassle bag, something like that. Well, I'll just use both of them, huh? Okay. Hassle pfeffer, or hassle back, a pinch of this. Higgly piggly. Abra canoe. Add a bit of that, too. Pour it in. Drop it in. Shake it all around. Ah, it'll never work. That burn it, George. You'll never know till you try it. Here. It says you're supposed to wear it right next to your heart. All right. Hoss. Yeah. I can feel the power of it working. Yeah. I really can. 
Do you know something? I feel lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dog, go with that spirit, George. I'll tell you what, we'll get little Joe and we'll go into town tonight and try it. Huh? <laughs> I still say we're making a mistake being anywhere near where that Joan is hanging around. Oh, we ain't got nothing to worry about since Hoss gave him that concoction. That's right, Harry. He's a changed man. Now leave him alone. Boy, Bess, Hoss. Fine. Thank you, Cosmo. <laughs> hey, thank you, Hoss. <laughs> Thanks, Hoss. Yeah. Look at that. I never seen such a change in a feller. That charm never fails. Yeah. <laughs> you know you sure do look pretty tonight, Susan. Thank you. I bought the dress this afternoon. You see, Hoss said you might be coming in. Do you, do you mean that you you did it for me? Sort of. I'm going to keep this dress forever and ever as a remembrance of tonight. Yes, sir. That sure is a mighty potent magical potion at that. You know, the only trouble I had finding all them ingredients was that graveyard dust. If I hadn't found that Indian burial ground, I had to come all the way in here to Boot Hill. What? You did not use dust from an Indian burial ground. Sure, sure I did. What's the matter? That was dust from unhallowed ground. Well, you just said dust from a graveyard. You didn't say anything about no special kind. Dust from unhallowed ground. The charm is no longer a charm. Well, don't get excited and all upset. I, I said the right words and everything. It doesn't make any difference. You put a most horrible curse on him. Look, you don't really believe this stuff, do you? Yes. Yes, I do. I do. I told you not to talk to this guy, honey. It'll cause you nothing but trouble. You leave us alone, Pooh. George. Come on. <laughs> well, you did it again, Jonah. <laughs> hey, I'm awful sorry, Mr. The Hill. Well, you ain't gonna believe this, but... Somebody's gonna stump or go and hurt themselves. There is the world. Oh, you guys. See, it's great to have relatives. A big help. Give me a drink. Well, I knowed it. Even with all that hocus pocus, that didn't help. He's still a Jonah. Will you shut up? Uh, Give me a whiskey. Come on. Give me a beer, Cosmo. Here. Here. Sit down. What for? Just sit down. Shuffle them. Huh? I must see what the cards are going to say. Oh, well, that's a lot of dang nonsense. No matter what she does with them cards, ain't gonna change nothing. Are you all right, little Joe? Oh, no, I'm not. I have a lot of pain right there. Mm. Is that better? Oh, yeah. You know, Martha, you're the best friend I have. Am I? Mm. Look, ma'am, we ain't got time for these games.
There is a fight. That is part of it. Shuffle them. Why me? What is going to happen will affect you too. You look at that. You ever see such a silly mess of mumbo jumbo in your life? What does it mean? The lifelines are identical. You are bound together by a common fate. I don't, I don't understand. The charm has become a curse. She says it's all my fault, George. Listen. I saw five events in the cards. The first one already happened, the fight. On the first night, I see an explosion and a fire. On the second, a wolf howling three times. The next day, a snake is going to strike and miss, and yet not miss. That night, the third night, a black horse will come to the Ponderosa, bearing your saddle. Death. Looking for a rider. After that, it is not long. A few hours. Then I see you, Hoss, and you, George. Your body stretched out in the moonlight. And that is the end. Yeah, well, uh, Madam Teresa, you... Make this sound mighty exciting, but thank you anyhow. Come on, George, let's go home. I don't guess I'll need this anymore. So long, man. <laughs> oh, I, I wouldn't sit so close to that fire. You know that prediction, fire, explosion. You go ahead and josh all you want to, little brother. It's a funny thing. Somebody makes a prediction like that, no matter how much you disbelieve it, you find yourself waiting for it to happen. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I'm, I'm waiting right here for that, that dark-haired girl to show up. <laughs> <laughs> What are we gonna do about them rustlers? Well, welcome home. It's about time you started thinking of something besides hocus pocus. I'm sorry, Paul. You know, we done lost 31 head. Ain't we gonna put out guards or nothing? Yes, of course we're gonna put up a guard. I've just been trying to figure out where, though. Yeah, we lost the trail of those cattle. Just around that rocky outcrop. I think maybe starting tonight we ought to do that, huh? Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> Stand there. But don't stand there. Do something. Fire and explosion on the first night. That's what she said, wasn't it? Yep. 
Oh, come on, will you? A little gas pocket formed among the logs. Happens all the time. George, will you go out and saddle your horse and saddle horses and wait outside? Now, will you stop worrying about this hocus-pocus business? Now, come on, get your hat and gun and go out with George. Start guarding against those rustlers. Oh, Hoss. See if you can talk some sense into George, huh? Yeah. You really think that explosion was caused by a gas pocket? future with a deck of cards, and that's by holding four aces in a poker game. A wolf is supposed to howl three times. That's the first one. Howls twice, it don't count, huh? Shh. Come on. One more time, make it four. I thought you didn't believe in Teresa's predictions. I don't. Not a dead burn word of it. Then explain them wolf howls to me. Just like she said, three of them. Go on, explain it to me. Well, it's, it's a coincidence. You know, George, if Teresa could really predict the future, it seems to me that she'd be making a lot more money than the dimes and quarters she's picking up at the saloon. Don't you think so? Well, look at the prediction she's made. The uh, fight. Well, that had already taken place. Uh, explosion and fire. She didn't say where or when. And wolf howling. Well, these are all commonplace occurrences here in this part of the country. But I tell you, George, I'm going to make a prediction of my own. I'm going to predict that she comes riding up here today with some kind of charm or hocus pocus of some kind. It's going to cost you a lot of money. <laughs> no, sir, it won't, because I'm leaving right away. Oh, George, you can't do that. Well, the real big predictions are supposed to happen today. I mean, like that, that snake that strikes and misses, but don't miss. Now, that I got to see. And, and that mysterious black horse that comes up here with your saddle, don't you want to stick around just to see if they do happen? Don't you see, horse? She said we're in this together. Now, if I get far enough away today, that'll all be changed. I'll get you out of this anyway. I'd like to thank you for everything you tried to do for me. Oh, uh, I wish that uh, you'd see that Susan gets this watch, even though she is pretty mad at me. <laughs> it doesn't keep much good time, really, but it's the only thing I ever had that was worth anything, and Belong to my father. I'm going into town tonight. I'll give it to her. We should stay, George. Well, George. Sorry to see you go. I wish I could say that. But I'll take good care of that little girl for you. Bye, horse. So long. Good riddance. Uh, my poor ain't paying you yahoos to lollygag around here. Get at it. And that goes for you, too, Pooh.
What happened? The snake missed, but he spooked my horse so bad he dumped me and ran off. I couldn't do anything else but walk back here. So in a manner of speaking, you could say that the snake didn't miss his purpose. Yeah. It's gonna happen, horse. Tonight. And there ain't no way in the world we can escape it. to myself, didn't I? Yeah, let's go see how expensive this is going to be. Oh, I've been so worried about you. I'm, uh, I'm awful glad. That, I mean, I'm glad that you're not mad at me anymore. Oh, George. <sighs> Madam Teresa, this, this here is my paw. Susan? Mr. Cartwright? Hoss? Hi, Susan. Teresa was telling me such terrible things, and I was getting so worried about George, and you too, Hoss, that I finally made her tell me that there is a way to put a stop to this curse. Oh, there is, isn't there? Tonight, both of you must get back to the Indian burying ground. I have written out what you must do, and brought everything you will need. A charcoal brazier into the fire of which... Uh, Madame Therese. I'd like to see what you've written out here, if you don't mind. Roots of violets, sulfur, spirits of hartshorn, marjoram and rosemary. A witch hazel rod with which you must inscribe the magic pentacle on the ground. <laughs> Look, I, I don't know how much you expect to get for this for your paraphernalia. There is no fee, Mr. Cartwright, and no charge. Nor is there, as you are thinking, a dishonest purpose. My only interest is in helping both these unfortunate men. Well, it seems to me that these uh, unfortunate men are old enough or should be to help themselves. I, I'm sorry that you had to come here for nothing, but I'm afraid that's just what it is. Uh, Susan, Susan, I appreciate what, uh, what your intentions were, but I, I think you ought to go back to town and take this with you. Uh, Susan. Susan. I want you to go on back to town and not worry about a thing. Now, I'm going to be all right. George, please take this. Oh, I don't think I'll need this. George Whitman, if you change your mind, be sure you follow the instructions to the letter. You be careful. Squally tonight, though, ain't it? It's time to leave your paw on Charlie. Yeah, I know. Awesome. See you in the morning. Okay, Joe. me out of a year's growth. What, what are you doing back here anyhow? Waiting. Waiting for what? The black horse. Oh, George. 
I still got that magic stuff Teresa left. Do you think that maybe we we'll... George, you know what Paul said about that magic stuff. It's the horse. He's coming. stuff in the bunkhouse. Higgledy, piggledy, bones in the night. Curses be gone with a big shin bone. Abracadou. Size of Mizzou. Take this curse off of me and you. Burn you fool, you scared the daylights out of me. What are you doing here anyhow? Gas. You're the one that's been stealing the cattle, ain't you? Wrong. Turn around. Both of you. Turn around. What's George? Me? Yes, you. You see, you and me were out riding. Came upon George and caught him red-handed. He shot you, but I was lucky enough to get him before he could get me. Strange, isn't it, how Teresa's predictions came true? Right down to the last one. You and George lying dead in the moonlight. Pull! Pull it. Looks like somebody else done some figuring, too. You better drop that gun. Shut up. Paul! Oh. All right. Break him up, boss. Break him up! Hey, Joe! Come on. Joe! Get back to the herd. Everything's all right down here. Harry? All right, Mr. Poole, you can get up now. You got the rest of your gang. You might as well join them. Take him into the shed, Harry. Making a fool out of me. You did good, Jonah. Hey, Paul, how did you know where we were in here? Oh, followed Poole here. Did you know that he was the head rustler? Just found it out. Yeah, his gang was trying to get away with some more cattle tonight. Poole was also the fellow who was making Madame Teresa's predictions come true. Did you know that? Well, I'll be dead. How come you didn't let us know about it? Oh, well, you were so busy with your hocus-pocusing that I thought it might be better if you were to keep on doing what you were doing and Poole were to keep on doing what he was doing until he finally hanged himself. Boy, Paul, you sure played it close to the vest. Well, 
at the horse. I wasn't sure until tonight that who was the man we were after. Then maybe I wasn't a jinx this time. <laughs> oh, George, of course you're not. You got to remember one thing. There's no such thing as a jinx man. Yes, sir. I remember that. Hey, why don't you go help little George take care of the herd? Right. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> old George really did think he was a jinx. I never did believe any of that stuff. I was just going along with it because I thought it was helping George feel better. Higgledy piggledy. Teresa, still no sign of her? The dark-haired lady? That's the one. I do not believe I was wrong about her. You will see. All right, if you say so. Oh, well, I'll tell you, I'm glad that's over with. I'll have one. Oh, so am I, Paul, except for one thing. What's that? Can't figure out how Poole got that black horse when Georgie Saddle wanted to come in there. Poole found the runaway, put Georgia's saddle on the black horse, and did to scare him, thank you. Did the same thing with the shotgun shells, put him on the logs, and he imitated the wolf calls. It was always Poole, always Poole all the way. No hocus pocus. Well, that explains those things right nicely. All but one thing. What? That rattler? What about the rattler? Well, now, how do you reckon that Poole knowed which trail George was going to take out of the Ponderosa? Well, a, uh... Harry, haven't you got anything to do? But well, why don't you go do it? Why, why, rappers? Hey, Paul, wait a minute. How did he know? Hoss, what difference does it make? Look, one out of five. One out of five. Now, is there anything wrong with that? Just like the card said. Oh, me doggone. Hi, I'm Joe Cartwright. Yes, I know. about that. 